everyone, welcome back to my channel. To those who are new here, my name is Yulia. I am Ukrainian expert living in Amsterdam. And on this channel, I'm just sharing the type of experiences Ukrainian experts happen to have here. <laughs> but also I'm just showing bits to my day-to-day -day life and uh, sharing my feelings and thoughts with you guys here. So make sure to hit subscribe button and let's get back to today's video. And actually the topic for today's video I uh, was inspired by, uh, well, by the description I have just um, used to introduce myself. So what it is like to be Ukrainian and that is exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video today. I'm going to start with a little bit of a challenging part and I'm going to mention, and to, to be honest, I must also start with the fact that it does not feel anymore the same and especially now with the recent uh, events of like um, yeah probably even before the war started I would say it did not already feel the same but uh, back five years ago when I when it was the first time I visited London uh, and uh, the reason I did because uh, obviously Jav is British so we went there to see his family and uh, to spend some Christmas time with them actually and whenever we would come to some sort of like a nightclub, was it a nightclub? I don't know. No, actually, nightclub doesn't sound like me. <laughs> so we went somewhere where they would require our passports. And the moment I've, I've uh, shown my Ukrainian passport, people were like, ah, oh, you're from Ukraine. All right, okay. And, and that's it. And they would just talk specifically to him, indicating that whoever is Ukrainian just kind of has a reputation of being that sort of woman and that actually felt very discriminative because I might not be a black person so I might not know what it feels like to be treated disrespectfully when you're black like in US or whatever but being Ukrainian and being with someone who is not Ukrainian and traveling around the world and kind of being also blonde and I don't know whatever else <laughs> kind of has effect on that not necessarily always gives you a nice treatment from people around and once again as I already mentioned this used to really be the case before now I probably do not feel it that much but also I think the fact of having a family and all of that it kind of changes it so uh, yeah well I guess them type of women people think you could be they are not having kids with not Ukrainian I, to be honest I don't know I don't know how far and how bad could it actually go but uh, that is something which I would also consider like a separate wave of a Black Lives Matter. So that for me that would be Ukrainian life and whoever is not a European type of passport life matters. The second point, which was honestly my pain throughout the um, like 10 years of experience of living outside of Ukraine, and those were visas. So to leave Ukraine, to, to relocate, you know, like to just leave Ukraine and go live in like Europe or I mean, I, I never lived in the US, so I don't know, but basically to just relocate to another country, which is a part of European Union or US or UK for that matter, you have to go through hell of a process of getting visas, of getting like whatever type of um, approvals and uh, and also to be actually qualified to even apply for that visa, you have to have like a solid grounds to do that and um, not only it actually requires time whatever effort etc etc but it also requires money because it does cost money but also <laughs> the funny thing about europe was actually so you could um, relocate to europe and be allowed to legally work in europe by having a permanent co well not a permanent just by having a contract with a job who is willing to kind of stand up for you and sort of apply for your visa on your behalf at the same time to be able to sign that type of a contract with that type of a job you need already a permission to be working for european union so it's kind of like a vicious circle which is just not possible to to break through so that was a little bit annoying and that was like kind of just felt so unfair you know I was like I am exactly the same person as someone who was born in Poland, Germany, whatever, whatever else so why am I not allowed to just simply cross the border where I feel that I want to and find myself a job opportunity and actually I never ever in my life tried to live somewhere just for free on some sort of subsidies and like not pay taxes etc so it was always legal work for me whereas obviously I would have then paid taxes etc so I would actually contribute to the economy 
yet it was a really difficult process to actually relocate and then so what I did use back then um, and again actually this now changed so now Ukrainians and I'm so so happy it is possible now for my mom for instance to be able to live here um, obviously the circumstances are not to even speak of but uh, I am happy that people are granted the opportunity to explore that type of opportunity once again and I mean it, it might feel different because this is not something I mean there is a difference when you're forced out of the place you live and actually you never consider changing and there's a difference versus you wanting to leave and you're not being able to leave so I understand also why people might not be happy about what what they're experiencing at the moment but for me it was really difficult to actually leave Ukraine and settle legally in another European country and actually be able to work and kind of earn money and sustain my living by myself. Also, there was a funny story, another one related to that is um, we were already living in Barcelona together with Jab and I am uh, <laughs> watching Sex and the City episode. I was like, oh my goodness, I am going to New York. So I, and I already had visa, I've already been to New York before, but I just wanted to really like, I felt like, you know, this city is just calling me. So I booked a ticket for like a next week. And I was like, oh, Jab, I am gonna go. Do you want to come? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'd actually come. Yeah, but I don't know, like, do I do I need any sort of visas or anything? And that actually question might have even came from me, come from me. And then I'm checking, and you know, like, the whole process of getting a US visa for Ukrainian, and maybe not only Ukrainian, but for Ukrainian passport is like a proper three months process, you know? So you apply, you, you submit like tons of documents proving that you're not gonna settle there as a refugee, that you have means to travel whatever you know so it's like that you have actually reasons to come back you go through an interview you go through whatever other god knows che whichever other checks and then you finally so i finally got approved but i mean that was the whole process and then now uh job being just british and he goes hey you know i've been in us before i'm not sure about the visa okay could you please just have a look for me and I'm typing like how to get it and I'm like, you know, while I'm typing, I was like, just no chance he's gonna get this visa so fast because I mean, it's just, you know, US visa, whatever. <laughs> and what do you get? So for UK citizens to get US visa, you have like a 10 minute online questionnaire, free of charge, of course, because actually hours costs money to get. Free of charge, result is granted automatically within this like online submitting of the questionnaire. And that's all it takes. So it just feels so bloody unfair all the time. Why are we treated like not the same part of the same bloody world? So to me, that was um, a big fight for a long time. Really, I was kind of, I don't even know who exactly I was fighting because I mean, none of the people who I'm surrounded with are having any sort of things to do with the visa process, <laughs> settlement, etc. And my last bit probably was when I was trying to really get my mom to stay here when all the Russia kind of risk was already threatening us but was not yet actually happening. And then my mom came here at uh, Christmas time, a um, few months before the war started and then I was literally going to every single lawyer that I could have found asking how do I keep her legally in here after the 90 days allowance of staying in the European Union expires. And the answer was yeah, unless, unless you're being like, I don't know, targeted yourself, obviously without war uh, having officially started back then yet. So unless you're being physically targeted for your own life back at your country, there is no way. Even though I am, you know, like a daughter, so it's not that I'm some sort of like a colleague or friend or whatever, I want to have her here. I am willing to uh, pay her like whatever type of like that, that we pay to nanny, so I would actually pay for her, to her. I am providing her with accommodation. I'm taking the full responsibility and there is still no way for me to bring her legally into the country. So that was like, <laughs> just feels like you are actually hating all of this visa and whatever else uh, process setups because it just, it's just not following the human rights. It's kind of, it feels like, well, they are determining what you're allowed, not allowed to do and uh, kind of, yeah, I mean, obviously now that again has changed and uh, I've kind of um, happened to accept the situation overall, but, and, and now I do feel really also the pain of other nations which are suffering whichever kind of repressions at their own countries when they are saying, oh, Ukraine has got so many privileges right now. So I do understand where it comes from because I've been in the same position literally like, well, less than two years ago, trying to find the justice, the justice, but it just simply 
nowhere to be found. The next one is actually the comment which I got here in this YouTube video. So I was sharing the cost of living in Amsterdam and I just mentioned that, you know, the prices for the gas went really crazy and it's kind of like, it's really annoying. And I mean, apart from annoying, it, it does affect my budget, you know, and then I kind of was not really prepared for that. And the comments I got were, yeah, well, if you Ukrainians are complaining that what do you expect from us? like not Ukrainians, whereas our kind of taxes, our whatever money, our government is just sending to help this Ukrainian war, you know. And I was like, I kind of try to understand as well where it comes from, from the other person, but for me, the fact that I am Ukrainian, the fact that of course I wish was the, that was the, my whole heart and basically everything for war to stop, I am still a human being who needs to afford a living, you really know? So for me, them two things are not self, exclusive exclusive is it so by being ukrainian and by wanting to but by understanding the reason the gas cost went up etc i at the same time do not see the reason why could not i complain about it and why could not i say oh bloody whatever you know like the prices went up etc so it just it's kind of like expected that because you're related to um, to Ukraine, to the fact that Russia actually invaded us, so it's my country that they've invaded, and obviously, yes, I, I do want for all of it to stop. Yes, I do want Russia to be sanctioned. And yes, I do understand that all of that causes then the gas price increase, etc. But at the same time, it does not stop me from not wanting to pay the high bills on a monthly basis for something which cost me uh, 15 times less last year. So <laughs> you feel a little bit guilty, well I felt a little bit guilty for kind of even sharing it, but then I thought, but why should I be? I mean, firstly, I'm not the one who started the war, so it's not that I'm like, uh, I've started it and then I'm, I'm saying, oh, by the way, you know, like the, the outcome of it is kind of what causes me this, this and that, and I don't really like it, or what, what a shitty story that is. <laughs> so no, we can still complain, you know, and we can still be unhappy about uh, whatever else that is that is happening, as an outcome of the fact that stupid neighbor did invade our country. Obviously the number four <laughs> is something that I already mentioned several times and this is obviously war. So what is so much um, also frustrating about having it, sometimes even fr more frustrating than for other nations I believe, is the fact that you actually have to coexist at the same time whilst it's happening and believe me even more like internal sort of pressure you have from within it's just not the time to be too happy it's not the time for for being too whatever else and actually apart from even pressure from outside you have this pressure from uh, within your own self so it's very difficult to kind of just accept the the amount of the pain the, the amount of the collective suffering that it that it is happening basically as we speak and just kind of let yourself be the way you used to be before and the way you just would actually like to live your life so um i mean of course it's all like it all comes to the point of um I mean, you, you have to you have to find your ways and you have to kind of figure out how to make it work and all that. But at the same time, always just imagine it's like it's like you're living in a house where two rooms out of your like three rooms are constantly burning and it's like you can't do anything about it. It is not damaging your whole house, but it's kind of it's always there and you can't really do anything about it. And, and it just hurts, you know, so there is like a permanent amount of pain inside every Ukrainian at this point of time and you have to live your life with it. You have to find a way to be super happy with your kids, you have to find a way to be super super strong with yourself, to plan your future, to to whatever else, you know, like to, to, to I mean, travel and to kind of still remember that, oh, well, by the way, back at my country, this is what's happening. So this is very um, not easy to do. And yeah, well, sometimes you just ask yourself because that is such a big kind of from the life perspective, huge matter that it makes you question everything else. If that is not to be influenced and people are dying every single day, then what is what does it matter for me to record this YouTube video? You know, like everything in, in, in perspective just looks not relevant anymore. And uh, I think that is um, a great, great challenge that every Ukrainian had to overcome and probably is still overcoming in a way over this recent uh, month since February 24th of 2022. Uh, but let me actually finish with something very positive and very good. And um, I uh, 
always, you know, like I, I've been raised in a family where my dad would only speak Ukrainian and uh, well, actually my mom spoke Ukrainian too, but not only. <laughs> so she would speak uh, Russian as well. But um, so my dad was always like a type of a man who he was who, who was like in a, in a huge, deepest like respect and love to, to the country. And that's how I was brought uh, up. And then at some point when I just lost my faith in everything that was happening, I really wanted to leave Ukraine. I really wanted to relocate. And uh, I had this disconnect for quite some years, probably before I got pregnant with Daniel, so still a few years before war, when I realized that what I want to pass on to the next generation is, 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 is my roots, you know, like who I am being Ukrainian. So the language that I spoke actually is Ukrainian and uh, all the traditions, all the culture, all of that. And uh, now being able to do that with my kids and actually now job picking all the Ukrainian uh, I mean, not the language, but the sentences, <laughs> the combinations of the words, etc., makes me feel so, so proud. And uh, also, you know, well, I know I've mentioned the war, but the way we are, and I'm, I mean, I don't even uh, mean to claim the, any sort of victory to myself, of course not, but the people and Ukrainians are fighting and the strengths everyone is having, it gives you this kind of, again, collective. I don't know, like additional power or something. So you feel so much proud to be Ukrainian and uh, you believe in in your own kind of integrity and in your own kind of once again strengths and the fact that the nation will just thrive regardless of whoever wants for it not to. And uh, that uh, that is something which I was lacking really before because when you... Uh, it, it's like not liking the family you came from, you know, like it's, it's something you can really change. So it's already happened and what you can, the best what you can do is actually accept it and be proud of it. And now when it happened, uh, once again, like already since since few years for me and now with the war even more so, that feels like a whole piece of a, just like a big different puzzles came together. And I just couldn't be more proud to be Ukrainian versus what I am today. And um, I just wanted to share with you guys uh, because obviously uh, in here, I don't really have many Ukrainian friends, actually none of them are Ukrainian, so everyone is asking and kind of um, sometimes I'm just getting like these this questions uh, and I wanted to share this video with you in case you were wondering too of uh, how it is, uh, what it's like to be Ukrainian. I hope you like the video. If you have any questions, any comments, any sort of anything to share, please do share in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to this channel and see you next week.